Okay, I think that was hands down the best first episode we've had for a season since HVV. No question about that, just... Yeah, I got great reactions from this cast in this episode. I feel like the twist actually did uh, help give the tribes a lot of division. We're seeing a lot of tribal action, although there has to be because there's only six people, so you can't totally hide. Great immunity challenges, great funny moments, and just... Yeah, it was just great to see. I've got a lot in my mind, and hopefully I'll be able to... Uh, Remember all of it and explain it to you guys. And yes, I've seen everyone's vids, so I've got it loaded here, baby. <laughs> so, the way the season started off, all the tribes arrive, and it's pretty funny how they do the contrast, because you've got uh, the beauty tribe being taken there by a boat, looking full of themselves, and then you've got the braids arriving by helicopters, so the broad are like, what the hell, we had to go through that truck! Yeah, that was pretty funny. The tribe selecting the, uh, leader, um, well, for beauty and, uh, brain, it didn't really surprise me. As for a broad, well, I felt like they could really go any which way, and, and for them, really, they're not looking for who's leader, they're looking for who's confident, at least that's what they said, so, choices for the leader, not a big deal. As for the people to, uh, be, uh, uh, so temporarily sequestered from the group, uh, brawn and beauty, that made sense. As for a brain, well, actually I learned from listening to Rob Sestadino's video that, um, originally David was actually going to choose the obvious choice, which was Kaz in that situation, but because he's the third person, he actually thought that there was a possibility it could be a challenge that these three had to do, so he decided to select a strong member, who also happened to be the tallest out of all of them. So there was actually a method to his madness, even if he didn't put that into his confessional. Now, I know that he did uh, do a little bit of confliction between what he said in the confessional and with Rob Sostanino, but my thought so is... It's very possible to, you know, be full of yourself in your confession or deliver, like, a false opinion, but for Rob Sister Nino, you have no reason to lie. You're off the show. Right? Okay. So, that's that. Um, as for uh, choosing to help the tribe or the, uh, clue thing, uh, what, uh, Trish did, she could honestly have gone either way. The other two, it was a lot more obvious that they were going to go for the clue. And then as for uh, Garrett finding that idol, pff, that was like the easiest found idol in the history of Survivor. Ralph doesn't count, he wasn't looking for it. Hmm? Really? I knew it was guaranteed for the moment he found the clue that he was going to find it. Sheesh. And it doesn't surprise me that Morgan didn't find it, because if it's going to be among rocks like that, it's a lot harder to, you know, climb around and look into every nook and cre crevy in there. Heck, for an idol like that, you might not even need to move it from its hiding place. You can just leave it there. So how did I feel about the tribes interacting with each other? Well, surprisingly, Beauty actually seemed to align with each other pretty well, even though, of course, they did get the least amount of camera time for both parts of this episode. Then as for Braun, um, I'm really liking how diverse they are, not just because of the height and different ethnicities, but just... You've got various types of personalities. You've got Cliff, who's the fun-loving person. You've got uh, Tony, the uh, very serious guy. You've got, uh, what's his face? Uh, Woo! Hopefully I'm saying that right. Who's just the typical guy who's just like, yeah, whatever. Let's go on and do it. And then you've got the ghosts, who all have different levels of determination and stuff like that. I'm pretty interested to see what happens with this tribe. And then as for a brain, well, you could tell, based on the edit that they were getting, they were definitely going to lose the first challenge. David, well, he basically pulled a Matt and a bit of Russell from One World and Philippines, respectively, and basically uh, made crazy decisions as a leader. 
Now, there was a bit of a reason for it, as he reveals to Rob Sestranino, but still, I feel like he could have done a better job anyway. So, uh, going into that challenge, it was obvious within the first two seconds that the brains were going to lose, so I was just like, yeah, whatever. As camp, uh, the tribe uh, turning against David, that didn't surprise me in the slightest, so when he left, I just go, yeah, given. So then everyone goes back to camp on that tribe, and then it gets a little more interesting with Garrett trying to take charge. And, uh, he is right in his thinking, because if they get rid of Kaz, which is the obvious move, it does leave the, uh, tribe members on a 2-2 two two playing field. So he tries to, uh, get Kaz into the, uh, alliance, and even though he, uh, keeps trying to reassure that this is a tribe thing, I assure you, it's not really a big deal. Well, uh... I could have sworn in a couple of your discussions, you were mentioning that, you know, it's kind of like a gender thing, why you and Spencer are together all the time. Are you sure about that? Because don't you realize that you and Spencer are both male and white? And the people you're trying to oppose are black and female? Uh, gender thing? I don't think so. I think it's a race thing. Seriously. I mean, like, I don't think he's trying to be racist, but... I definitely got that vibe from him, really. So, that's what I can say about that. Uh, everything else that was going on in the other shows, there's not that much to comment about, really, because they're both adapting the way they seemed like they were in the previous half of the episode. Beauties, g uh, staying together pretty well, even if a sort of alliance is forming between uh, more... Gan and the uh, two guys that aren't LJ, and, uh, question. The, uh, black guy, I think his name is, like, Bryce or something like that, uh, I don't know, Jeff Rye, whatever his name is, uh, he seemed to deliver a bit of a comment where he was like, I know people seem to expect me as, like, the fourth girl on the tribe, but I think I'm actually doing a good job of manipulating a couple of things. Uh, that didn't make that much sense to me. Is he saying that he's gay? Because it seemed like in a couple of comments relating to this episode, they keep mentioning a gay person on this season, but no one has specifically stated that they're gay, unless it was in their, uh, pre-game interviews, which I actually didn't see, because they didn't seem interesting enough. So can somebody clarify that for me? Thanks. Okay. So then as for the, uh, second challenge, I was basically hoping the, uh, brains would lose, because, um, I could tell based on the, uh, storyline with them that they would have to go back to Tribal at least one other time. Just like with Matt Scene and Survivor Philippines, after they lost the first challenge, it was obvious that they were going to lose at least one more. The next one, it wasn't a guarantee, but, yeah. So originally, I was expecting the challenge to be four people having to, you know, swim out and grab the fish traps, because there's four fish traps. They bring it back, and one person survives, does the puzzle. So I was originally thinking that because they were doing that, they were going to send Jatia out and have everyone else go because they'd be better swimmers. But after I saw that all five members were going out, I, was, I thought, okay, don't have Jatia do it, have Spencer do it. Why Spencer? I don't know. I just got the feeling that since he was the one that was causing the least amount of trouble on the entire tribe, that it just would be better that he does it. And like, you know, how the other tribes had their leaders solve the puzzle, you know you want to have the person that's the most stable. Now, of course, there was nothing stating that, uh, LJ and, uh, ooh, that other chick as Stephanie, uh, you know, were in danger, but just, you know, I think you know what I mean. But now they have Jatia do it, and she has so much trouble with that puzzle that Beauty was able to catch up and win that challenge. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be arguing that because Jeff kept mentioning that the Beauty Tribe was so far back that it was a guarantee that they would catch up. I don't think so. It wasn't until, I think, LJ got the third piece of the puzzle for his tribe that 
it became clear that Beauty was going to win because we've seen several situations where a tribe is able to make up most of the physical parts of the challenge while another tribe is having issues on the puzzle. And then they're able to start the puzzle and get to basically where the other tribe previously was. But then the tribe that was originally here from the get-go ends up winning. That's happened before, so there was no guarantee that it would happen. So, going back to the uh, camp, it seems like the right move is to get rid of Jatia, but then Garrett... Yeah, he uh, basically blew it with the way he tried to handle the situation. I mean, like, there were all a couple of good intentions to it, but... Even when you have good intentions, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be received or executed well. And it was not executed or received well here at all. So, going into Tribal, it was pretty tough to figure out uh, where Kaz would go. Oh yeah, I forgot about the rice, sorry. I figured like that was totally stupid, Jatia, getting rid of the rice. I mean, like, you're hurting your fellow tribe mates for crying out loud. And it seems like production actually isn't going to replace the rice, like they did with them um, last season, but, okay. The issue with last season was that Brandon was just, uh, well, psycho, and it actually happened just before the tribe switched, which allowed an opportunity for the producers to sneak it in, stating that they were always going to get that rice. And this season, Chatia is not, well, unstable, she's just pissed at the members of her tribe, justifiably so, I might add. So, I mean, like... I can understand sort of why you're not putting it back, but you really should because a tribe member deliberately trying to sabotage their own tribe with that. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know you're going to say Russell pouring out the canteens. Guys, you can always gather more water, you can always boil it, and you can always have more. You can't get more rice unless production gives it to you or you win it in a challenge, which is still production giving it to you. Yo. So I'm not really a fan of this, even though, yes, it makes the show interesting. I fully agree with that. But I don't really like the fact that they did this. Now, if, say, uh, it was a situation where there were two tribes, the merge happens, and one tribe is going to the other tribe, tribe B sees tribe A incoming towards them, and then they just decide, you know what, let's make life a little bit hard for them and make them do some work. Let's burn our rice. Now that I'm fine with because it's a unified tribal decision. Not just one person deciding to be well, let's face it, an a-hole and dump the rice. Come on. I spent way too much time on that. Ugh. So going into tribal, it was a little tough to figure out where uh, Kaz would be, but then she decides to blindside Garrett. Um... Now, it will make what happens on that tribe more interesting, but... Yeah, this tribe really isn't thinking about anything except of social issues, and even then, they seem to be doing a piss-poor job of it. But yeah, <laughs> Garrett, he was totally shocked. He didn't even have his stuff or the idol. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I think that's pretty much the first time in Survivor history that somebody who orchestrated the blindside of another contestant was blindsided the very next tribal. <laughs> nice, twist of fate. Even though I did kind of want Jatia to go, but... Even if Jatia had gone, I think Garrett would have blown it eventually, really. Because there's no way that Kaz would have stayed with them for the next tribal anyway. Yeah. So, pretty interesting episode. As for uh, next episode, well, given how they show only the uh, Brawn tribe, it's either that tribe that's going to lose or the Brain tribe, just because that would make it a little more interesting. Now, could they throw in an interesting enough story arc to make it so Beauty loses? Absolutely, but... Based on what I know so far, I don't think that's happening. But it could happen, because there's nothing stating that brains need to go back to tribal now, just like with Matt Singh in the Philippines. They didn't have to go back to tribal after their second loss. It just so happened that they lost. But, hey, there's still potential for both those tribes. Hmm. 
And uh, do I think that this tribe is worse than Mad Scene? Yes! After thinking about it, I do end up agreeing with it because... Mad Scene was getting rid of its weakest and most disruptive members one by one until only the best were left standing. This season is doing pretty much the exact opposite, getting rid of the stronger members, doing poor the challenges, doing poor camp life, doing poor in social relations, and... Yeah, the only tribe member that I personally think is even really thinking about everything honestly is Spencer, to tell you the truth. But yeah, now he's on the bottom, although he did do a good job of admitting, you know what, okay, you guys blindsided him. It was a 3-2 vote, my only ally left, I'm on the bottom. I acknowledge that. It'll be interesting to see what happens to him. Yeah. So, other things to mention for this episode, I really like how this season is having a lot of rain, because when was the last time we saw Jeff this drenched at Tribal? Uh, I think it was old school Survivor, honestly. I can't recall any time in the new school that he's been this drenched at a tribal council. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, okay, I, I gotta talk about this. Okay, Morgan, now, okay. Yeah, she is hot. I fully agree with LJ on that, but, um, what's to do with all the shots where we keep seeing a lot of boobage, Ricardo? That? Now, am I looking for that, or is the camera guy just looking for it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just had to throw that out there. I'm not going to throw it out there anymore, though, trust me. Okay, well, that was a lot of video, but I did have a lot to say. Like I t told you, I love this episode. Uh, anything else to mention? Uh, nah, I'm enjoying this season, and I think it's going to be a good one, based only on this episode. And hopefully this will get, uh, one, people, uh, satisfied with, uh, uh, new people's cast coming back, because, like, I don't really mind returnees, but, yeah, we do need a season with all new people eventually, but then again, I did like One World, and a lot of people didn't. Mm -hmm. And hopefully this season that does have a good finale, because the last three seasons in, uh, the Philippines, uh, all did have a good amount of strikes, but then they downgraded themselves a good lot towards the end, but I've been noticing a steady improvement, so I'm hoping that this is just another cycle of where we go for a full season cycle where the very first season drops it from the good status that happened in the, uh, last season of the previous cycle, but then gradually builds itself up as time goes on. Hopefully that made sense. Alright guys, well, see you next time.